Hi, superstars. Thanks so much for spending this time with me today. I'm Debbie Starr, the writer of In the Waiting, which is a blog I created on debbierstar.com. It's where I share my story of going from being a movie marathoner to running three half marathons in one year's time. Today's video is specifically going to cover triggers. Now triggers, what exactly is that? It's, it's when something happens and you automatically, your brain goes there or your body, your reaction is to do a certain or specific thing. Now triggers can be good or they can be bad. Today's triggers, I'm talking about bad triggers. So basically a trigger is going to be something that sets you off, that steals your peace and steals your joy. Now, I'm sure you can sit there and think of a few things right off the top of your head, but there might be some things that go on that are kind of hidden that you're not really aware of until they're going on. So if you struggle with binge eating or head to the junk food or going to salty food or, or junk food or wanting to go leave the house or call in fast food or have something delivered, take a moment and see what's going on at that time. Are you angry? Are you stressed? Are you um, being rushed? Are you extremely tired and fatigued? Are you wanting to escape something? Is something crazy going on and you're just emotionally wanting to, to numb and go, go there? So those are all different things that triggers and it'll, it'll take you a little while. You might know a few of them off the top of your head, but you also need to take some time alone with God and pray and just to think and reflect and to know who you are and what things make you happy and what things, you know, stress you out and why you go there. And if you have habit hunger and you have certain things that you do out of habit, look and see why you do that. You know, what is it? What's going on? Is there something that's triggering it? Um, and for you to have the habit, cause you be, could be going great, um, sticking to your diet, getting your workouts in, and then something happens and that trigger then can come in and sabotage you. So that's why it's so important to know what your triggers are. Now for me, I'll share with you a few of my triggers. I do not like to be tired. This girl needs her sleep. I do like, do not like to be uncaffeinated. This girl needs her caffeine. It keeps me happy and bubbly. It makes me be able to think if I don't have caffeine, my brain is in a fog and I'm basically pretty much useless and grumpy. So, um, I also don't like to be rushed. I don't like to be having to hurry or wake up late or that, that, that automatically kind of gets me into, uh, anxiety into, to where I start freaking out and start creating things that aren't even going on, you know? So those are all triggers that for me is very easy. If, if I don't get my sleep, if I'm not caffeinated, if I'm not eating good, I don't like to be hungry either. Um, if I'm not eating healthy, I'm not getting my sleep and I'm putting myself in situations to where those things happen. I know that's a very weak moment and I could possibly go into a negative or bad habit. Um, if I don't pack something healthy with me when I'm on the go and I know it's going to be a busy, rough day, then I might be tempted, more tempted to go through fast food or eat something that's not healthy out of a vending machine or whatever if I'm not prepared and I don't have those things under control. So knowing your triggers is so important in your success for the long run. Now, triggers can be good and I'll do a video maybe someday on good triggers because triggers can be something to where, again, it helps you when it happens, you remember to do a certain thing. But today, I just really want you to take some time alone with God and to pray and to think about and just kind of self-discover of what your triggers are. Now, you might be saying, okay, when I do have this trigger, what do I do? Well, first of all, you want to try to prepare. You've heard me, if you've watched any of my videos before in the past, over and over again, you got to prepare, you got to prepare. And that really helps you by doing this kind of time and every time that something comes up and you realize that you made a negative or bad choice, something than what you planned on doing that day, you went to, you know, you know, the chocolate or you, you went to the ice cream or something at the end of the night that and you overindulge and you realize, man, I shouldn't have done that. Why was it? Oh yeah, I was tired. I should have went to bed. Or you know what? I got a phone call from somebody that really upset me. Or I read something on Facebook and I got stirred up and that made, sent me into that. You know, we all do things for a reason. Okay. So if you're continuing to eat bad negative foods that you know aren't good for you and you keep going to them over and over and over again and overdoing it, there's a reason why. And that's really what we're trying to get to today. But, um, First and foremost, if you haven't watched my video on you do have what it takes, go back and watch that because that will tell you about with the Holy Spirit that you have it in you, you do have what it takes. So you can break this addiction, you can break these bad habits, you can start to make healthier choices and to do something different and replace that bad habit with something good. So, um, but I do want to read a couple scriptures from the word for you. One of them that I love, that's a great scripture, you know, whenever you start to get worried or something is going on, you know, maybe something has happened that's made you angry or whatever. And this is just a great word. My great, great grandfather, who I never met, had a little slip of paper in his Bible. And I will always remember it's kind of based off of the scripture that says, worry about nothing, pray about everything, and thank God for all things. And so in Philippians 4, 
um, six through seven, it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So he's promising us that if we take our worries or concerns or whatever it is that's going on to God, and we tell him what's going on, even though he already knows he wants relationship. He wants conversation. Okay. With relationship with people, it's not just enough to be and hang out with your spouse. You actually have to have a conversation and converse and that builds your relationship. You know, if you're just hanging out and you're not having any communication, we know that with all relationships, if there's no communication, the relationship dies. Correct. Right. So God still wants to hear from us. He wants to have conversation with us. He wants us to bring things to him that are str- that we're struggling with, that we're bothered with. And, um, then the peace will come upon us. Then no, even if our circumstances don't change, God says he promises that he's going to give us peace through Jesus that will help us to get through those moments. And um, that's such an encouragement. Another reason why it's so important to know what the word says and to not just go by what everybody tells you, but also for you to know what the word says, because then when those moments arrive, you can go back to that promise that's in God's word and, and be encouraged in that. And there's life, you know, the the word is life. It's breathing. It's an ongoing thing. So another little uh, scripture I want to share with you is John 14, um, 26. This is when Jesus is telling us that he's going to send the Holy Spirit to help us. And again, if you haven't watched the video, you do have what it takes. Go back and watch that after you're done with this one. And um, I share some more encouragement on that. So um, 26 says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, this is Jesus talking, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything that I have said to you and peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. Do not, I don't give as the world gives because the world, right? We give with motives and ulterior motives and things like that. Sometimes people call it love with a hook. You give for, cause you're expecting something else back, but that's not how God gives. He says that he, his peace, he gives to us and don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. So again, he's reminding us that he's got us. He's taking care of us. He knows what's ahead. He knows what's really in that situation. And through the Holy Spirit, we can have self-control. We can have joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and that self-control. Superstars, share this video with anybody that you know that would um, be encouraged by it. Give me a little like. It's my tip jar. And my prayer always for you is that you would make healthy choices while you are in the waiting.